She is getting really serious with this guy. Who is? Maggie. She was out all of last night and that's the third time this week. Well, who is it? Do you know? We well, see, I don't know. She's not telling me for some reason. I am not a big mouth. <laughs> I am not. There you go, Dash. There's nothing like a bit of my lighter side today, is there? It's Tai Chi, Nick. Is it? Oh, you know that. Here you go. Dash, Nick, good day. You stupid bloody woman, you broke me concentration. <laughs> I'll break something else in Just a continue <laughs> with the peace and serenity. Continue with that sequence, I'll be right back. Good morning, Mrs. Dunn. Aha, they knew you were coming. What? Two community service kids. They actually turned up for work this morning. No, this is a surprise visit. Oh. I ain't slacking off ever. The whole time they have been here at Eventide, they have done five hours' work. Well, I'll make a formal complaint. No, why don't you let us talk to them first? We'll make them lift their game. Hey! Don't you even think of doing that? What are you doing here? Check out with you two. Look, I stuck my neck out to get you two off with community service. The magistrate was all for sending you to jail. Yeah, well, I'd rather go to jail than work here with all these nearly dead people. Well, you muck your chance up out here. That's exactly where you'll go, dear. Help! Jail. Someone get the police! Help! Someone get the police! What is it? That was quick. What's your problem, Mother? It's my ring. My engagement ring. It's missing. It was them. They stole it. They stole my ring. Okay, so did anyone see any strangers hanging around? There weren't no strangers, they're mongrel kids. Leave the kids alone. They didn't do anything wrong. Hey, don't stick up for us, Granny. You're nothing but a couple of no-good criminals. And you're a waste of space. You two better come back to the station. We didn't even go into her room. Yeah, you searched us and his car and didn't find anything. Yeah, whatever, just come back for your own safety, come on. Yeah. Put them in jail and let them rot. Oh, shut up. Oh, Leela, everybody, the kids are going. Why don't you just go about your business and let us do the work? Now, Hazel, uh, are you sure the ring was in the drawer? Oh, yes. I wear it to breakfast and then I pop it in there before my shower. Well, did you lock your door? Uh, I don't remember. Hazel, have any other valuables gone missing from in here? Oh, no. My engagement ring is all I've got. I sold the rest of my jewels to make ends meet. So when you got back from the shower at 9.30, you, uh, you noticed the ring was gone? Yes. It must have been that young boy and girl. They must have come in and taken it. What makes you think it was Carly and Aiden? They're young. And Cheryl told me that they'd once stole an old lady's handbag. Well, Hazel, we need more than that. Hazel, dear... Is it because everyone was outside at Tai Chi? That's right. <gasps> tai Chi days, Hazel has extra time in the bathroom. Make yourself look nice for your visit. Oh, Yvonne, my visit. He'll be waiting. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. This is the day that uh, Hazel meets her husband. I can't see Ralph without my engagement ring. OK. So we're going to need a list of everyone who was indoors between 9 and 9.30. Oh, well, apart from Carly and Aidan and Hazel, we were all outside of my Tai Chi class. Any latecomers? Hmm? Well, we weren't the only ones inside. There were a few oldies shuffling around. All right, Aidan, can you describe them? Oh, no, they all look the same to me. Did you see anyone in the home between 9 and 9.30 or not? No, but that doesn't mean we took the ring. Aidan, mate, you've got a history. Yeah, one attempted bag snatch. Big deal. Oh, it was a big deal. That old woman was seriously injured. Well, we went back to go see if she was all right. Well, lucky for you, Constable McKinley here defended that version in court. You see, I reckon you should have gone to jail. Well, we didn't. Well, there's always next time, isn't there? You see, Mrs Spencer's ring's worth thousands of dollars. You wouldn't get community service over that, would you? You ever think? How's it going, Doyle? You dirty rotten stop out. Excuse me? I hear the drought's broken in a big way. Okay. Get that. 
You already get the promoter, are you? Uh, Adam, how'd you go? Very jumbled accounts about who was and wasn't at Tai Chi class for the entire time. And also, check that shower plug hole. There is no way that that ring fit down that hole. Oh, someone struck it lucky. Well, it's not Carly and Aiden. They know one more strike in their own. Oh, well, maybe they think it's worth the risk. All right, thanks very much. Bye-bye. PJ, that was fingerprints. Various prints were found in Hazel's room, but none of them were Carly or Aiden's. See? Surely they would have had enough sense to wear gloves. They didn't have the evidence on them. They didn't know we were coming out, so why would they get rid of it? Are you at least going to explore other possibilities, PJ? Yes, Dash, I'm going to go out there and ask a few more questions. Is that OK with you? Um, excuse me? Yeah, Mrs Dunn. I couldn't help but overhearing. Uh, if you're going to continue with this investigation, I think you're wasting your time. <laughs> Why's that? Because I doubt Hazel's ring has been stolen. She seemed pretty definite this morning. So are you. Yes, but I couldn't tell you that her mind is going and she's been misplacing things for months. She has a dignity. So you think she's just forgotten where she left it? Yes, I do. Well, Hazel didn't seem to me as a woman that was going senile. <laughs> you know the husband she was going to meet? Well, he passed away ten years ago. Hazel gets a taxi, she goes to the park, she sits on a bench and she talks to her dead husband for an hour. Well, if it... If it gives us some comfort, I suppose. <laughs> well, I suppose in that respect, senility is a bit of a blessing. Mm. All right, but you can't be sure that the ring hasn't been stolen. I'm sure. Even though Carly and Aidan had opportunity. I think it's far more likely that Hazel has lost the ring. Just give me a day or two to jog her memory, we'll find it. We always do. Yes, I know, but in a day or two, hot leads can turn cold. The residents need to feel they live in a safe, secure environment. Now, if the police start buzzing around, they're going to lose their peace of mind. If she isn't a woman with something to hide, I don't know who is. Well, she's a clean skin. Yvonne has been given awards <coughs> for service to the community. They don't come more on it. I still might organise a warrant to search your quarters. You won't need a warrant, and I doubt if you can get one anyway. Just ask her permission. <coughs> can I have a word? Now, what are you doing blabbing about my private life? Oh, it wasn't Nick, wasn't me. Yes. What is a girl supposed to do? You're not telling me anything. You could try keeping your mouth shut. Well, you could just tell me. No. What, Maggie? Is he in the job so I understand? What? You think you're going to get in trouble? No, no, no. It is as simple as this, all right? You know, I've had a lot of bad luck in my private life. I always make a fool of myself. I just want to see where this one's going before I do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Hey, Maggie, just one minute. He's in the job, isn't he? I do, is he from St. David's? I want to see... I want to see Dick Schultz. That's Nick Schultz. Mighty for after Dick, that's the man to see, Detective okay. Hesham. <laughs> what can we do for you, sir? I thought you'd arrested those Stephen now, Hubbers. What the hell are they doing back at Eventide? Like, uh, they've been given some more community service hours to perform. And they're not thieves, Mr Edwards. Oh. <laughs> hey, I was here Excuse first. Excuse me. I, don't <coughs> I said wait your turn. Mr Edwards. Yeah. Don't you speak to her like that. Who's going to stop me? Just me and my five little mates. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, boys, settle down. <laughs> Stick away, Move defending my honour. Yes, it's very gallant, Leela. Now, what's the problem? problem? Yes. Oh, you just listen yeah, to me, it's mate. awful. You keep your I'd mouth shut or you're in big trouble. A bottle of whiskey? Not just any old bottle of whiskey. Black Douglas in one of those fancy boxes with a glass. Merv gave it to me for my birthday last week. It's not cheap when you're a pension. Not that you're not worth it, love. You're worth ten bottles of Black Douglas. Oh, best day of my life when this one asked me out. Best day of mine when she said yes. Oh. Um, perhaps you could do that later on, mate. You reckon? With rules at the home about visitors, we hardly get to see each other at all, let alone do Leila. it. Leila. Well, you know what I mean. Well, Leila, why don't you just go over to Merv's place? Maggie. You know, a real lady would never call on a man. Um, about the scotch. Oh, yeah. Well, I reckon you should go out and breathalyse the lot of Leela, them. Leela, you see, there's only a certain amount of time that we can spend on a bottle of alcohol, unless you're drinking it, of course. Don't you see? A pattern's emerging. Hazel's ring, my bottle of whiskey. It's hardly a pattern. You wouldn't say that if you knew the rest. Well, what's the rest? Leela, you're not supposed to say anything. I think they should know. Lots of other stuff's gone missing from Eventide. 
Uh, what do we have? One pipe, one silver picture frame, one diamond bracelet, one money clip. Now, why didn't you report these thefts, Mrs Dunn? Because I don't believe they are thefts. No, oh, just more old people losing things, hmm? Yes, I believe so. Have any of the items been recovered? No, not yet. Once this list started growing, you must have suspected that there was some sort of foul play involved. No. I just thought it was all perfectly innocent. Yeah? Well, why did you ask the residents to keep quiet? Do you have any idea the amount of damage negative word of mouth can do? Ah, old people need to feel safe and secure, yes. Exactly. As it is, some people have moved out. What, the people that have been robbed? Amongst others. If the police had started investigating, word would have spread. I could not have then protected the reputation of Eventide. You knew the items had been misplaced. Mm -hmm. Yet you did nothing. Well, I was sure that I could resolve the matter on my own. But did it occur to you that Carly and Aidan might be responsible? No. The first item went missing and my office was broken into before they were placed with us. You, what? So now there's been a robbery? Oh, nothing was taken from my office. It was just someone sticky-beaking through the filing cabinets. Uh-huh. OK, Mrs Dunn, I'm going to need a full list of uh, all this stuff. Uh... Oh, well, I realise now that you have to investigate this, but could I please ask you to be discreet? Why don't we start with the Vons quarters? If it was her, surely she'd have moved the stuff by now. Anyway, I think we should concentrate on Carly and Aiden. Didn't Yvonne say that the first item was stolen before they arrived? It uh, was an old pipe. The first item of value went missing after they got there. You think they're unconnected? Well, maybe the pipe is the one thing that is just lost. You have an old folks home full of suspects and you focus on the kids. They're the only ones with opportunity to steal the ring, Dash. It's prejudice. An intruder could have taken the ring and the other stuff. The place is always crawling with visitors. All right, McKinley, if you can find one person that visited the home those dates, I'll give you an elephant stand. OK, you just sit tight. Bye-bye. That was Hazel Spencer at Eventide. She wouldn't say over the phone, but she knows who took her ring. What's going oh, on? Don't what? come down, Leela. Leela? What's happened? Oh, Excuse it's us. awful. Excuse me. It's nasty. Poor old Hazel. She's dead. Uh, we got a woman, late 60s, name of Hazel Spencer, found dead ten minutes after ringing us with important information. You think it's suspicious? Well, crime centre on their way, and uh, we'll have to wait for the autopsy results, but it's, yeah, it's looking that way. No one saw anything, I suppose? That's what we're trying to establish, boss. All right, keep me informed. Now, Thomas 508, back on channel. Hazel had a crook ticker. I reckon it finally just gave out on her. Ticker, my... <coughs> Backside. They pushed her, them young mongrels who nicked her... Stop ring. blaming the kids for everything. She had a heart attack and you brought it on. They had a big argument just before. She had to go off and get her heart pills. God. <coughs> she just walked in on me and the dunny. She was always doing it. For a cheap perv. Were you sure it wasn't about her ring? Or did she find that not your possession? <coughs> no. We all knew the kids had done it. Well, did she say that? Not then and then. All right, when did you next see Hazel? About five minutes later, at bingo. <coughs> yeah, I, I saw her. Hazel and me always sit together at the bingo. And how did she seem? She was real upset over the fight with that bastard. Mm. Leela, what, what time was that? 20, 25 past five. And 15 minutes later, she rang Maggie saying she knew who took the ring. Did she give you any idea? When did you next see Hazel? Just, just, just before you got there. At the bottom of the stairs. I should have gone with her. But my car was nearly full. And... Leela, it's all right. Now, apparently, nearly all the residents were at bingo at the time. Is that right? Well, folks come and go. Well, can you remember anyone who wasn't there after Hazel left? Well, come to think of it, Shell's chair was empty. I've given bingo away. 20 cents a game, it's daylight robbery. Now, Shell, did you see Hazel between 5.20 and the time she was found dead? 
I didn't talk to her, but I did see her outside in the garden, through my window. She was alone? She was having words with those two kids. Heated words. She apologised for saying we took her ring. Really? Yes, yeah, said she found out who it really was. And who was that? She didn't say, I didn't ask. Well, I think somehow Hazel found evidence that it was you, and she's going to call the police. Oh, you reckon, do you? Hmm. Yeah, she did ring us, just after she spoke to you. And she was found dead. Where were you between 5.40 and 5.50 this afternoon? We were driving home. Well, can anyone corroborate that? Carly. Apart from Carly. Don't know. Well, you better hope somebody can, mate, because it seems to me you're the last people to see Hazel alive. We weren't the last people to see her. Just before we left, we saw her talking to, um, uh, Yvonne, is it? She asked to use the phone in my office. Where were you while she was on the phone? I was just outside the door. What was she talking about? I don't know, she was whispering. Well, you must have overheard something. No, but I just guess she was talking about the ring. And what happened after the phone call was over? Well, Hazel left the office and I went back to do my paperwork. And then I found this. I reckon Hazel found the ring in Yvonne's office. Yvonne overheard her ringing us and before Hazel could spill the beans, Yvonne has sent her down the stairs. Hazel may have had the ring in her possession when she made the call and just left it behind in Yvonne's office. Yeah, but if Yvonne was guilty, why would she hand in the ring? Because she's counting on us asking that very same question, mate. Why would she provide the evidence to make herself prime suspect unless she's innocent? Well, Hazel came into contact with quite a few people. We can't eliminate any of them. We can't rely on fingerprints because Yvonne's would be all over it. Until we get the autopsy results and the report from crime scene, we are still just looking for a thief, not a murderer. Well, just in case, I'll go out and make sure they lock the doors at even tight tonight. That'll be effective, considering who holds the master key. Well, thank you very much. OK, bye-bye. That was Mr Hogan. Ah, uh, the pipe owner. He found his pipe when he moved into his new place. Uh, so what, it isn't connected? No. Nope. Have you spoken to other people that moved on? Uh, nearly. I'm still trying to track down a couple of them. All oh, right. Well, uh, they can wait till tomorrow, eh? Let us go home. <laughs> oh. And whose home might that be? Yours with your nosy neighbour or mine with my suspicious flatmate? She's not going to give up until she finds out who I'm seeing. Cheeky devil. So your son visits every fortnight. Yeah, Can you remember the exact dates and times? <laughs> you know, I'm just as bad as you are. <laughs> and you deserve all I'm going to give you, eh? Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clary, put it down, Clary. They killed Hazel. They the did not. Do something. He's got off his rocker. Are you all right? Don't pay any attention to him. They're good kids, really. Look, we don't need you defending us. That's exactly what you need. And a good clip over the ear to knock some sense into you both. Oh, you're not so tough. They're just a couple of kids who need a bit of loving. You haven't even got the courage to tell each other how you feel. Don't think I haven't noticed. You should go for it while you're young. I've met the man of my dreams. And my love's nearly over. And we can't even share it. You don't know how lucky you are. Mrs Lawler. Oh, I wrote it oh, down thank for Thank you very much for that. Mrs. Do you have a brooch very similar to the one that Mrs Dunn's wearing? Oh, yes, I gave it to her to say thank you. She's done my shopping for me all these years. Oh, that's very generous of you. I'd have left it to her anyway. But you've mentioned her in your will. Oh, yes. Yvonne's been so good to me. We all love her like family. Do you know if any of the other uh, residents have shown their appreciation in such a way? Apparently, Keithy Simmons, who died a few weeks ago, left her a bundle. Well, you have expensive taste for a woman on your salary, Mrs Dunn. You know very well that most of these are gifts. From residents in your care, past and present? Yes. I didn't steal any of it, and I certainly didn't ask for any of it. Uh, you just do the little favours and act the martyr, huh? <sighs> You've got no idea. Well, maybe they felt that if they didn't hand something over, like this jewellery, the care they'd come to depend on would stop. My residents have their pride. Repaying me for the odd jobs I do makes them feel less like charity cases. And you're very happy to accept. Oh, well, I don't want to insult them. Mrs Dunn, you also included 
in a number of the wills of residents in your care. Where'd you get those? Well, you said we could search the office and this was just part of the paperwork we found. Hmm. We noticed also that you are mentioned in Mrs Hazel Spencer's will. Mm, it'd be interesting to check the autopsy for the cause of death on that. You're also the main beneficiary of Mr Keith Simmons, who died just over a month ago? Yes. Mm. Oh, we've spoken to Dr Zoe Hamilton at the time. She put his death down to natural causes, but he was 89 after yeah. all. Yeah, I wonder what would happen if we zoomed the body and took a closer look. She checks out. Oh, no, don't tell me that. Yvonne was left a large sum of money by Simmons, but she gave it back to the family. Hazel had nothing left to leave her, and uh, another time she gave the money to charity. So what? She's a saint. She's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Rubbish. She has a strange kind of hold over these people. They do whatever she tells them. They put her in their wheels, they give her jewels, they keep quiet about thefts. Well, she does pull all the strings. So, let's charge her. Dash, we've got nothing concrete, you know that. Dash yeah, just I knows this leads us straight back to Carly and Aiden. I don't know that at all. Hey, how's your visitor's check going? Who's I'm narrowing place? it down. Which means you're going nowhere. Boss, we've just had an anonymous tip-off about where we might find the stolen goods. I've got a warrant here to search your quarters. My bloody hell, it's an invasion of privacy. Got something to hide, Carrie. Oh, shut up! And what will happen if I don't? We might have to arrest you, mightn't we? What a pack of mongrels. <laughs> hey, you can't smoke inside. Who's gonna stop me? How come you lived so long? Oh, you can build a bloody freeway with all the tar he coughs up. <coughs> hey, me whiskey! Hey, Lila, don't what touch that. the... Bracelet, money clip and picture frame. All right, Mr. Edwards, we'd like you to accompany us down to the station, please. Uh, Mr. Edwards, why would somebody want to frame you? To get rid of me. Leela and that lot, they've been trying to give me the push for months. They even signed a petition. That would make you a bit angry, wouldn't it? Oh, you bet it did. Well, enough to get back at them? Hey, uh, watch it. Uh, Hazel found out you took the ring, didn't she? Oh, bull dust. And then did you meet her at the staircase and did she tell you that she'd called the police? <coughs> uh, look, Mr Edwards, I'm not saying it was you. It could have been an accident. It could have been an accident, but you were there at the time, weren't you? Would you like a drink, Mr Edwards? Hey, <coughs> uh, yeah, you are right about the prints. They've all been wiped clean. And I checked about his whereabouts against the dates of the good stolen. Three of the four don't stand up, so he couldn't have done it. And he was at Bingo yesterday yeah. over. He played every game. So he's in the clear. Looks like it. Tough. You should give up, Clary. <coughs> I'll give up <coughs> when I'm good and ready. It's <coughs> great, <coughs> isn't it? Yeah. Free to go, Clary. Thank you. Go, oh, mate. Light that fag. It's been all ten minutes. You recognise that Very voice? No, it sounded like a woman, but it sounded unnatural, like they're putting it on or something. Not like someone young trying to sound old. Which one? Yeah, maybe. It could have been anybody. Oh, you're among friends. Well, Carly and Aiden are getting a hard time from Clary. Why would they risk their skins just to get back at a grumpy old man? They could have stolen the goods. Then when we were closing in, it was right. the obvious okay. decoy. Thank you oh, come on, PJ. You got a better idea? I'm all ears. Look, it might be worth bringing the kids in for another chat. Uh, boss, before we do, I've tracked down all the people who moved out of Eventide, and I think we might have something. Oh, I see. So you're the Jackson in the Jackson Retirement Village. Well, when you've got something you're proud of, it's good to put your name to it. True. <clears throat> so uh, how's it going? Are you full up yet? Well, we're up to 50%, mm -hmm. and uh, that's not bad for somewhere relatively new like this. It's funny. I thought there was a big demand for retirement homes. Oh, well, mine's a retirement village. Uh, the occupants here actually own their own units. It's not quite as popular as the homes. So that's why even Tide has a waiting list, and you're half empty. Half full. <laughs> <laughs> I hear there's been quite an influx of residents from Eventide to here. Well, that's right, actually, yes. Mm. Bang, 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 one after the other. Mm. Huh. Any idea what brought that on? Well, there's a bit of a rumour that things were going missing over there. And I guess everyone needs to feel secure. Well, you wouldn't be complaining, would you? No, no, I sold uh, three units in four weeks to ex-Eventide residents. Well, that's business, isn't it? You know, someone loses and uh, someone gains. There they are. I want to know what's going on. Sit down. Leela, Mrs. Lawler. I want to know what that murdering, thieving bugger is doing back at the home. Uh, I presume you're referring to Clary. We didn't have any evidence against him. He only had a stash like nobody's business in his room. Yeah, well, we have reason to believe that that was put there by somebody else. What well, sort of reason? The sort that justifies us yeah. letting him go move. I think we should go over and help. Yeah, that's fine. So, uh, what's on tonight? No? Well, uh, there is a reason why somebody broke into a vine's filing cabinet, so I'm just going to go over the files and try and find out why. No, that can wait. 
Oh, well, I think with my personal life temporarily on hold, I might need a bit of a distraction. I won't be for long, will Oh, Dash. Hi. Hi, Dash. Oh, the uh, autopsy results have just come in, and apparently Hazel did die of natural causes. Oh, really? Yeah, she had a heart attack which caused her to fall down the stairs. Uh, well, you might want to tell that lot. Oh. It's PJ, isn't it? Come on, Maggie, you might as well tell me. Whatever you say. It all fits. The secrecy, the way you two look at each other every now and then. We work together, so looking at each other is kind of necessary, I think. Oh, so are you trying to deny that you're having a relationship with PJ? No, 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 I'm not denying anything. Why not? Well, I mean, Dash, if you want me to deny it, I'm quite happy to. Maggie, no, you're messing with my head. Look, Dash, if you want to believe that I'm seeing PJ, that he's fine with me, you go right ahead. So, no, Maggie, Maggie, you want me to think that you're seeing PJ because, in actual fact, you're seeing someone else. Good night. And the Polish class is at Good the Good morning. Well, Kimberly. Oh, I'm sorry, boss, but my ride left without me. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to lift? Yeah. Oh, I'm on to reverse psychology, Maggie. What? You led me to believe it's PJ just so I'd naturally assume it's someone else, didn't I? Yeah. You broke the list? Well, Jackson's alibi's check out. He couldn't have done the thefts himself. Yeah, well, no one at the home saw him hanging around. You mean to say we're actually no closer to solving this? We're still just eliminating? Well, I haven't eliminated him yet. I mean, he's got a lot to gain from this. What, do you think he, uh, he got somebody else to do his dirty work for him? Yeah, it's possible, mate. Somebody could slip in and out unnoticed. Oh, so now you reckon Carly and Aiden are working for Jackson? Well, I was actually thinking yes, of one of Jackson's okay. employees, but now that you mention a dash, I'll look into it. Thanks for your use. There is more trouble over at Even Tide. Give me 109s, 12 o'clock. Hold on, everybody. I'll put it into a tailspin. Stop the bus, you bloody idiot. Hey, Dash. What happened? Oh, I was about to take them shopping and Clary went crazy. Hey! Nick, he thinks he's flying a bomb. One engine fire! Oh, Mike, turn it off, will you? Can't! Turn it off! One extinguish! Mate! I'll try and feather it! No, no, don't feather it, just turn the bloody thing off, will you, Clary? Clary! Clary! I'm not losing, Rudder! Clary, you're still Clary! Get back to that rear gun. Oh. We're going down. Let's take one of those jerry fighters with us. Just a few more minutes. We'll be over the sea. Hey. Put your chute on. Captain, we've lost all the engines. You have to bail. Get the others out first. They're all out, sir. You've saved them. They're safe? Yes, Captain. Right. Right. Oh, right. Hello, Lila. Oh, yeah. Oh, most of this young fella. Oh, well. You're going to kill these people, you silly old bugger. You've been drinking, have you? Marijuana. Uh, we found it on him. The tobacco had quite a bit of dope in it. What in God's name is a man of your age doing smoking this stuff? Somebody left it on my bed, so I smoked it. Well, who, Clary? Who do you think left it on your bed, Clary? Well, it wasn't any card. But I know it was the person who tried to set me up. I think the best thing to do would be to take Clary to the hospital. Yeah, all right. We'll uh, talk to him and get a later. Hopefully we can get a bit of sense out of him, man. Thank you very much, Senior Sergeant. Come on. Come on, Biggles. Just wait. What is going on at that place? If it's not one thing, it's another. Now we've got a 70-year-old man smoking dope. Well, I don't think Clary knew what he was smoking. Uh, Yvonne's never seen him like that before. You think he's been set up again? Oh, well, he knew he was a suspect, but he'd be pretty stupid to go off and get wasted. He's obviously crazy. Yes, McKinley, being sent up in a bomber at the age of 18 can do that to some people, and marijuana can give some people paranoid delusion. And who do you reckon would have access to the stuff? And you reckon you're not prejudiced, PJ? No, she can't ignore the facts. Facts? 
He's ignored enough of them. Yeah, like what? Like Yvonne. Ah. She's covered up all the theft. She had the ring in her possession. She's got a master key to all the rooms that you've eliminated her. Mm, with good reason. Well, what about the other residents? What about Jackson? Clary's practically walking around with a neon sign saying, I did it, yet you've dismissed them. And why? Because you've got two little scapegoats. Carly and Aiden are the only ones that could be linked to every single incident. Yes, PJ, but you can't prove they had opportunity for the first three thefts. Yeah, well, they can't prove that they didn't. Look, if that tobacco comes up Trump's dash, I'm searching the house. PJ, just give them a break. Why? Because they're not essentially bad kids. If we don't look oh, after oh, that, that's what All right, all right, done. Constable, all right. Now, if you think they're innocent, you clear them. So you're not so sure that they're guilty, are you? Off you go. I love it when PJ's wrong. It's a bit early to be overconfident, Dash. Adam, we have gone to every single retailer in this town and no one sold Clary's tobacco to any teenagers. Not every to... retailer, look. Hayley, can I have a look at that red packet of tobacco, please? Don't tell me you've taken up smoking. No, no, Clary's enough to put you off for life. Um, Chris, I didn't know you sold this stuff. Yeah, a couple of the old regulars still smoke Rollies. Well, have you sold it to anyone recently? Yeah, a couple of kids this morning. You know those two you tried to get into that community service thing? Carly and Aidan. I <laughs> <laughs> go to jail, sucker. <clears throat> Hello, kids. Um, constables. Um, do you want to have a game? No, thanks. Carly, Aidan, we need to have a chat. What's going on? Chat about what? Leela. Is it about Clary going off the deep end? What makes you say that? Well, gossip is that Clary told you somebody planted the dope in his room, which is a load of rubbish because he's been smoking the stuff for years. Yeah, well, we've got reason to believe otherwise. Come on. Dash, if they get done for this, they'll be put away. Leela, please. They didn't do it. I know they didn't do it. I I I've got proof. <laughs> I'd like to see that. Well, you're looking at it. Me. I did it. I put the dope in Clary's room. Layla! We're not going to charge you, Layla. Oh, no wonder the crime rate's so low around here. You keep turning away paying customers. Cripes, Layla! Look, it's very nice you want to protect the kids, but admitting to a crime you haven't committed is going too far. Look, I might look like your nice granny, but I did it. She didn't. Right. Well, if you've done it, that means you're the one who planted the other stolen goods in Clary's room, that right? Oh, hold on, I didn't say that. I put the drugs there, that's all. Why'd you do that? Well, I just wanted to see him make a fool of himself. Leela, we've spoken to the person who sold Carly and Aidan the tobacco this morning. Oh, they were buying that for me. Mm, they didn't know what I was going to do with it, though. So that means they also got the dope, that right? Oh, no, 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 I, I, I got that myself. From one of your many suppliers? Well, I got contacts in the drug trade. What the hell are you saying? What's the name of your contact? How much did you pay for it? I haven't got the bill yet. Dope on credit? Wow. They trust me. Well, that sounds pretty plausible, doesn't it? Uh, we'll have to charge it, won't we? You can't send it to jail. Oh, I'll just get a piddly fine and a warning. Right, Tom? Uh, and, of course, this means you'll let the kids go. You recognise that, Carly? I heard he had a warrant to search my flat. Oh, Constable Cooper here is a stickler for procedure. Anyway, there's not even enough there to charge me with possession. Well, the charge with possession is only the beginning, Carly. I mean, we've also got introducing a drug of dependence into the body of another person. It's not looking good. I had nothing to do with that old man being stoned. Well, we know it wasn't Leela, so who does that leave? Well, you're the detective. You figure it out. And that is happening as we speak, because the botany section of forensics are checking that marijuana with the marijuana found in Clary's tobacco. Tobacco that you and Aidan purchased. So we smoke the same brand. whoop you do Carly, if you admit your involvement, the magistrate might show you some leniency. I'm not admitting to anything. Yeah, just wait in here. Carly, shouldn't be too long till we get the results. Be late charge. Oh, it's best to wait till forensic confirmed that the grass comes from the same batch, eh? What about the thefts? Uh, they're still digging their heels in about that. Well, without proof or a confession, the charges won't stick. Well, no, if you nab them on the drug charges, everything else pretty much falls into place, doesn't it? No, mate, that's the thing. It doesn't. I mean, it's not financial. They didn't try and sell the goods. What about your theory that it's somebody working for Jackson trying to scare the residents off? Well, there's no connection between Jackson and the kids. I mean, have you found any connection? No. Yeah. So what's going on? 
or whatever it is, Leela is behaving very strangely. She's doing the best she can to incriminate herself, but with no evidence. So what's her game? Uh, you know, Jackson's not the only one to gain from the mass exodus at Eventide. You've got something there, have you, Margaret? Eventide letterhead, sir. Yeah, and there's this. It's the waiting list. Now, you notice it's a photocopy? Mm-hmm. Well, Yvonne said that nothing was taken when her office was broken into, didn't she? Well, I think what's happened is the offender's broken in, they've photocopied the list and taken the original by mistake. No, so they wanted to find out how many people were ahead of them, yeah? Yeah, and they're scaring off the other residents so they can move up the list faster. Well, committing the thefts has been very effective. So why don't we just interview all the oldies on that list? Well, Yvonne's already confirmed that the top six people have gone, so if we cross them out, that leaves us with... Well, Merv, it's, it's no secret just how much you and Leela want to be together. Well, she's too much of a lady to go to your place and be over a year before you can live together. So you decided to hurry things along a bit? You're not saying much in your own defence, Merv. Well, what can I say? Did you steal from the residents of Eventide in order to get yourself a room there? Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, so you thought that with the thief on the loose, the residents wouldn't want to stick around? Well, they wouldn't, would they? And what about Clary? What about him? Or did you frame him by planting the goods in his room? I suppose so. Mm -hmm. I suppose so. And while we're at it, I stuck that Mario Joanna there too. Come on, Merv. Leave the kids alone. I might as well have done the lot. Well, sorry for the inconvenience, guys. We won't be charging you after all. Why aren't you going to charge them? Well, Merv's confessed to everything. The theft and the fact that he stole the grass from uh, Carleen Aiden and put it in Clary's room. That's rubbish. He didn't do all that. Well, Merv's confessed. He's protecting me. I did it. No, Carrie. she didn't. You can't afford to get done for this. You go to jail for sure. She's not going anywhere. I did it. You didn't, Merv. He didn't. And neither did Carly. They're just covering for me. So you did it now, did you? Yeah, the thefts, the grass, everything. You're too young to be taking all this on, both of you. And it'll kill Leela if you get put away for something you didn't do. Yeah, Merv, just stay out of it. You're I too. did it, and that's that. I did it. Is this all some elaborate plot to cancel each other out? Uh, no, no, they're not that clever. Then what is going on? Well, Maggie picked it. Well, the goings-on at Eventide were engineered simply so that Merv could get a room. And who wants Merv in that home more than Merv himself? <clears throat> I'm not saying anything. Well, we've checked with Yvonne, and you were constantly on her back trying to find out how long Merv would have to wait, and when she wouldn't give you the information, you broke into her office and you took it yourself. Says who? Come on, Leela, even Merv cottoned on that it was you. That's why he confessed. Murph confessed? <sighs> Lord love him. As did Carly and Aiden. Now, are you going to let them take the rap? Of course not. It was me. Sorry, can, Leela, can you speak over the tape, please? It was flaming well me. Do you admit to stealing the missing items? I only stole from, from those who could afford to move. Hazel was broke. I thought she was loaded. You know, I nicked that ring two days before she even realised. Silly old duck. Gave it back to her at bingo, just because she was so uptight about it. Didn't know she was going to dob on me to you guys. Great friend, eh? So Hazel left the ring in Yvonne's office and rang the station to tell us it was you. Did you try to frame Clary for your actions, Leela? He deserved to be kicked out. He killed Hazel, always getting us so worked up. He's a mongrel of a man. Leela, for the record, did you plant the stolen goods and subsequently the marijuana into Mr Clary Edwards' room? Didn't I just say that? That was us. We made friends with Leela yesterday. After she put us in our place. Yeah, she told us that she was the one who took all the stuff. She had it in her room. She was worried that you guys would find it. So you relocated the stuff to Clary's room? Well, we didn't get done for the thefts. We put the dope in there too. No, look, Leela didn't put us up to it. We both went ahead without telling her. And both times when she realised what we did, she went right off. Look, you guys are on thin ice at the moment, so why take such unnecessary risks? Leela didn't want much. She just wanted to be with Merv. It didn't seem fair that they had to live apart. Yeah, she goes together. I suppose we just wanted to return the favour. I ought to knock your heads together. I told you I didn't want any help. Thanks to you, we could all end up in the slammer. Oh, come here, you bloody idiots. <clears throat> I think I might be safer off in jail. 
Leela Clegg, what has got into you? What am I going to do with this lot? Still in shock, Leela. You know, I never would have thought you were capable of such things. Oh, just blame it on love, love. Makes you go to any lengths just to be with your man. You're lucky I'm still around. Yeah, but what's going to happen to you? Do you get put away for all these things? Oh, Tommy won't let that happen, will you? It's not up to me, Leela. He's going to put in a good word for me with the magistrate. Said I'd get a fine and a probation period. Good on you, Tom. I said you might. And he's going to consolidate the kids' charges and recommend that they just have to do more community service hours. Tom, how lovely. Right, Sarge? There are no guarantees. They look after us. They're a good bunch of coppers. Yeah, they're real sweeties. So, Leela, what are you going to do now that you've been kicked out of even time? I don't know. Why don't you go live with Mav? Oh, I couldn't live with a man unless there was a ring on my finger. Oh, come on, Mav. What's wrong with you, Sam? Well, I asked her to marry me months ago and she said she'd think about it. You're supposed to ask me again, you mean? quite romantic how far Leela went for Merv, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a shame she had to break the law to do it. Yeah. You look great. Oh, thank you. You going out with you-know-who? Yes, I know who. Do you? Yes, I do. And did you notice I didn't tell anyone about you and PJ because I can keep a secret? Oh, I'm sure you can. Hello? Uh, yeah. Oh, OK, we'll sort it out. No, 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 that's fine. Bye-bye. That was a courier and he's left a parcel at the front door of the station. Mm, well, I'll ring the watch house. Oh, no, 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 uh, Nick's not there. He's not... So I guess I'm going to have to go there and put it inside myself. Well, you are on duty. <laughs> well, you have a lovely evening with PJ, won't you? Yes, I'm sure I will. left a parcel at the front door? Oh, well, I could have saved you the trouble. I uh, came in the back. <laughs> Shouldn't you be going out somewhere? I've got a stack of work to do. I'm going to be here half the night. What makes you think I was going out? Oh, no, no nothing. Just... <laughs> well, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, have and... a good night. Yeah, don't work too hard. See ya. What's going on? She can't be seeing Nick. She's getting really serious with this guy. Who is? Maggie. She was out all of last night and that's the third time this week. Well, who is it? Do you know? Well, you see, I don't know. She's not telling me for some reason. I am not a big mouth. <laughs> I'm not. Here you go, Dash. There's nothing like a bit of my light to start your day, is there? It's Tai Chi, Nick. Isn't it? Oh, you know that. Here you go. Nick, good day. You stupid bloody woman, you broke me concentration. <laughs> I'll break something else in Just a continue <laughs> with the peace and serenity. Continue with that sequence, I'll be right back. Good morning, Mrs. Dunn. Aha, uh -huh, they knew you were coming. What? Two community service kids. They actually turned up for work this morning. No, this is a surprise visit. Oh. I mean, slacking off, have The whole time they have been here at Eventide, they have done five hours' work. Can I make a formal complaint? No, why don't you let us talk to them first? We'll make them lift their game. Hey! Don't you even think of doing that? What are you doing here? Check out on you two. Look, I stuck my neck out to get you two off with community service. The magistrate was all for sending you to jail. Yeah, well, I'd rather go to jail than work here with all these nearly dead people. Well, you muck your chance up out here. That's exactly where you'll go, dear. Help! Jail. Someone get the police! Help! Someone get the police! What is it? That was quick. What's your problem, Mother? It's my ring. My engagement ring. It's missing. It was them. They stole it. They stole my ring. Okay, so did anyone see any strangers hanging around? 
weren't no strangers. They're mongrel kids. Leave the kids alone. They didn't do anything wrong. Hey, don't stick up for us, Granny. You're nothing but a couple of no-good criminals. And you're a waste of space. You two better come back to the station. We didn't even go into her room. Yeah, you searched us and his car and didn't find anything. Yeah, whatever. Just come back for your own safety. Come on. Yeah. Put them in jail and let them rot. Oh, shut up. Oh, Leela, everybody, the kids are going. Why don't you just go about your business and let us do the work? Now, Hazel, uh, are you sure the ring was in the drawer? Oh, yes. I wear it to breakfast and then I pop it in there before my shower. Did you lock your door? Uh, I don't remember. Hazel, have any other valuables gone missing from in here? Oh, no. My engagement ring is all I've got. I sold the rest of my jewels to make ends meet. So when you got back from the shower at 9.30, you, uh, you noticed the ring was gone? Yes. It must have been that young boy and girl. They must have come in and taken it. What makes you think it was Carly and Aiden? They're young. And Cheryl told me that they'd once stole an old lady's handbag. Well, Hazel, we need more than that. Hazel, dear... Is it because everyone was outside at Tai Chi? That's right. <gasps> tai Chi days, Hazel has extra time in the bathroom. Make yourself look nice for your visit. Oh, Yvonne, my visit. He'll be waiting. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. This is the day that uh, Hazel meets her husband. I can't see Ralph without my engagement ring. OK. So we're going to need a list of everyone who was indoors between 9 and 9.30. Oh, well, apart from Carly and Aidan and Hazel, we were all outside of my Tai Chi class. Any latecomers? Hmm. Well, we weren't the only ones inside. There were a few oldies shuffling around. All right, Aidan, can you describe them? Oh, no, they all look the same to me. Did you see anyone in the home between 9 and 9.30 or not? No, but that doesn't mean we took the ring. Aidan, mate, you've got a history. Yeah, one at 